just finished talking about parents, so now we're going to talk about other members of the family, in particularly the siblings. So right off the get-go, what happens when you have many siblings versus only a few siblings in a family? What's the difference between a family that has eight kids versus a family that only has two kids? Well, we know that in larger families with lots of brothers and sisters, there tends to be more rules. Parents have to have more rules just because they're managing more bodies. There's also more financial strain and more time strain, which we talked about before, which means that's going to impact some child developmental outcomes. In fact, the time strain can really lead to less attention per child, and the financial strain can lead to less resources for each child. And so this is the idea that now the children are competing against each other, and the children want to get the parents' attention or want to be the one that gets to go on a special trip, and they might not have enough money or enough time or energy to do all of that. If families who have fewer kids tend to have kids with slightly higher IQ scores who tend to have a higher level of achievement motivation and tend to have higher occupational achievement. This doesn't mean that every small family is going to have genius kids who excel, it just means it's more likely. If you come from a really large family, there might be less ability to hire you a tutor and to really push you to be your best. Whereas if you come from a smaller family, you might have those resources to really excel. So even if the siblings and the bigger family might not get ahead in life as much, having the siblings there really enrich their lives. And siblings get along a lot of the time, especially when their temperaments are complementary, when they're not going to butt heads on too many topics. Once the younger sibling enters adolescence, we also know the siblings tend to get along better. And what's really important is if you're gonna have lots of kids in a big family, it's important for the parents to not show favoritism. If the parents start comparing report card grades to different kids or how many awards or where they made it in Little League, then that's really going to spur sibling rivalry. And it's also important for parents to model a warm relationship with each other and with their kids. That's going to tell the kids this is how they should respond to each other in their family. If the parents are more hostile or more judgmental or more condescending, that's going to teach the kids to respond that way to each other. Now we know there's some positive and negative implications of having lots of siblings. One of the big negative ones is even when siblings get along, they still fight a lot of the time. In fact, sibling rivalry starts as soon as the youngest child is able to interact. So we know that when they're only three months of age and they can't really sit up, they're not really doing too much. But once they're able to crawl or walk around or distract or make a noise, the rivalry can begin. And we know that through home visits that were recorded, the average number of conflicts that occurred between two siblings would be about 56 conflicts per hour. That's right, 56 conflicts per hour. So almost a conflict per minute. So a jab or a poke or a condescending comment, not a huge fight, but little tiny microaggressions between siblings occurred at about one per minute per pair of siblings. So imagine if you have six kids, how many conflicts are occurring in one road trip with them all in the van? it's going to be a nightmare. That being said, we know those big families and we know that having siblings is good. We know that having a brother or sister provides you with a lot of emotional support. It also mentors you in a lot of cognitive skills like perspective taking and theory of mind. It also gives you a lot of good social training. The older siblings can really learn how to mentor and take care of and teach the younger siblings and the younger siblings can be scaffolded up and learn those other skills quicker. We also know that just being exposed to more people is good social training. It teaches us to communicate, to communicate in more diverse ways, and having conflict teaches us to resolve conflict. So there's a lot of good social outcomes associated with having siblings. That being said, is an only child going to be doomed? Well, no, we used to think only children were doomed. We used to think they were more likely to be spoiled, but that's actually been proven to be false. We tend to find that those kids that are only children, they spend a lot more time with adults than they do with other kids, and they get a lot more focus. So because of this, they tend to have higher self-esteem, they tend to have a higher achievement motivation, they also tend to be more obedient, more conservative, and they tend to be more intellectually competent. Now, despite having less interaction with peers, they can go on to have good peer relationships, but always they tend to have slightly lower communication skills and definitely slightly lagging behind conflict resolution skills. They may not necessarily be the jerk on the playground, but they might be more passive or more shy, or when conflict arises, they might cry a lot and not know how to handle it or think it's worse than what it is because they're unfamiliar with that conflict. 
but definitely regardless of family size kids benefit whether their only child only have a few brothers and sisters or have lots of brothers and sisters.